only against uh, some injustice and not against other injustice. Injustice against Polish workers uh, uh, is, is not really injustice to these members of the faculty. Uh, the, the, the communist injustice uh, sort of bores them. And that doesn't turn them on the way capitalist injustice to uh, uh, injustice inflicted by communism uh, inconveniences uh, uh, certain members of the faculty. Come on, fellas, those teach-ins were great. They made great television coverage. They made great radio shows. Ooh, they made great full-page color front cover, front cover pictures on the New York Sunday Times magazine. Let's have a couple more teach-ins, okay? Remember those beautiful people, sexiest people I ever saw all standing up no longer the old celebrity of the 20s flicking ash out of long rhinestone studded cigarette holders and deciding where to go for diamonds and dinner and bonbons and which resorts were to be considered she no 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 see the celebrity of the 60s was a lot gutsier sexier and gutsier giving her power giving his power lending name right guitars to the cause you see no more the celebrity, the, the vapid, insipid, lazy, self-confident, arrogant, uh, passive celebrity of the 20s, but the politically aware, astute, courageous, active celebrity of the 60s, the 70s, right? Where are you now? It's the 80s, and there's injustice in the world, and there are workers rising, and they have solidarity, and they too want to overcome, and they need your help. Are you going to be there when we come after you and ring your doorbell or ring your agent uh, and say, hey, uh, we're trying to fill up Carnegie Hall for our concert. We, you know, boy, hooray for the Polish, we, you know, solidarity. If I get a hold of you on the phone, you beautiful member of the faculty, you beautiful, sexy celebrity, if I get a hold of you and ask you to join our committee, are you going to ask me to call your agent? Uh, are you going to find excuses to be unavailable for Polish workers that didn't bother you at all when they were migrant farm workers in our own Southwest? Uh-huh. I'm holier than you. Forgive me for sounding holier than thou, but I just happen to be a little bit holier than thou, I think. I think that people who have lulled and be calmed and assuaged and poured the emulsified palliatives of political poppycock on Western nerve endings are the new war criminals. In 1945, Iranian hotheads would not have captured our embassy. Uh, Cuba would not have exported anti-American dictatorship to other countries of the hemisphere. The Soviet Union would not have invaded that. They wouldn't invade Yugoslavia, which was their Slavic brother communist turf. They wouldn't dare because Harry Truman might get angry. And it is the people like you who have been preaching uh, answer communist tanks uh, by sitting down cross-legged, breathing deeply, uh, learning a new mantra, and pretending you're a poached egg on toast, ma'am, are the ones who have virtually destroyed the West. I am trying, in my little way, uh, to use my energies to gather what's left and be about as courageous as a Polish worker. That's all. Hello? Have any say here? I, I, I beg your pardon? Can I ask you a question? You certainly may. One of the things that I gather from your conversation, not this moment, but in other uh, forums, is that you feel that the Persian Gulf is threatened, right? Oh, ma'am, and you may have the wrong show. I don't happen to use that particular cliche, but uh, uh, let's just, let me be your straight man. Okay, the Persian Gulf is threatened. Proceed. Okay. And if we go on that assumption, and of course, uh, if we build up a strong military power, the fact is this, that you cannot uh, uh, compare the situation as it is today with that of 1945 or whatever, or the invasions of Czechoslovakia, Yugoslavia, or whatever. In the first place, it's a well-known fact that the Russian army is about the lowest of the low. In the second place, Afghanistan was a communist country before this, quote, invasion. In the third place, we don't have to have a war to build up arms. We can win another way because we can give the Russians the technocracy to develop their oil in Siberia 
And if they concentrate in that area, we don't have to worry about the Persian Gulf. Ma'am, I'm going to practice intellectual triage right now. Uh, triage was that horrible concept the French developed in World War I, where the soldiers who could not be saved were given last priority treatment in the field hospitals, uh, and the soldiers who could be saved uh, were given priority along with those who might be saved. Uh, I, uh, Tria, after what you have just said, that instead of arming, so you overlook one thing very conveniently, you're right, you can't compare this with 1945. The answer is, and the reason is because in 1945 we were strong and now we're weak. You're too far gone. When you say the answer is to give Russia the technology it needs to develop its own oil, and then everything is fine. Uh, I am trying to think of an honest analogy, and the most honest analogy I can think of is if a beautiful young woman goes to a certain part of Times Square and gets raped uh, 38 times in a row and still tells those who love her that this is really the best place in town to go and, and, and we should give it another try. I cannot think of a more geometric, symmetrical, exact analogy than that. If you think giving the Russians what you call the technocracy to develop their oil is the answer to Afghan, how fatuously and how easily you write the Afghans off, excusing the Soviet invaders, because Afghanistan was a communist country. Ma'am, how did Afghanistan get to be a communist country? Uh, a free elections where Afghans said, yes, we want to be as nice and rich and secure and peaceful and free as our Russian neighbors to the north? Or was it Soviet invasion through subversion in the first place? Ma'am, I'm sorry to triage you. You're too far gone. I can't help you. Just by your insinuendo that you are about eight years and 188 arguments behind. First of all, you're suggesting that anybody who wants a tough foreign policy uh, is a conservative, and conservatives, of course, want to rape the environment. Only you soft-core, molten liberals want to help the trees. The rest of us want to bomb the rush. Sir, I just can't. I, I don't, I, there's nothing in my contract that makes me deal with the likes of you. I bid you good day. A student of how people in the media put down candidates they don't like. Now, there was one uh, newscaster who said, uh, the, cam the Reagan campaign opened with sound and, you know, no, no, the, the, that Jersey deal over there was a lot of sound and fury signifying, well, signifying the opening of the Reagan campaign. Now, this is subliminal karate. When you quote Shakespeare and saying sound and fury signifying, what's the next word? Nothing. Right. Signifying, the, so that word registers in your head that here this great man on television who we all look at and love, he, he never said it signified nothing, but that's what you get. You know what I mean? Uh, and uh, he, and uh, he said a small, and his brow sort of furrowed. In other words, the message that came across the screen when he said a rather small crowd was, uh, 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 this is not a jape at Mr. Reagan, but the ha <laughs> got to admit, because we're soldiers of the free press, that the crowd was uh, 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 small. Now, I ask you. Uh, now. How many times, this is so depressing, how many times do you have to say that you hate dictatorship everywhere, that if you're against injustice someplace, you've got to be against injustice every place or you lose my vote? Whoever wrote that must be going through tremendous ego pain right now that the communist system is finally being exposed by its own prisoners. It just so happens, sir or madam or, or whoever you are, that the reason you hear me say communist, communist, communist 18 times for every one Paraguay, you left out Paraguay, but for every one Chile, South Korea, Philippines, Brazil, all those countries are democratic gardens compared to any communist dictatorship. Matter of fact, a nasty, violent letter like that from somebody who only hears you criticize the dictatorships that uh, he apparently likes, in this case, uh, the communist ones. Yes. I'm not gonna cut you off, so don't you run away, okay? Uh, I want now to freeze the action. Just stop in your tracks like a movie that is stopped, okay? Oh. Get the picture, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Here we have a feudalistic Saudi Arabia, and I don't even want to talk about their punishments for thievery. They're all well known. We have Jordan under a uh, Hashemite monarchy. Uh, we have Syria that hasn't had a democratic impulse in its entire life. 
Uh, we have Egypt uh, under Sadat, total one-party rule. We have the world's only Jewish state. Count the Christian states. Count the Muslim states at 22. We have one little sandbar, one little unsinkable aircraft carrier of a Jewish state, which was founded on the premise that every Jew who needs a refuge can have one for the first time in 2,000 years in the nation of Israel. Because there are religious uh, people uh, who helped found Israel and the religious parties uh, have power. There are some rules that I find objectionable, wacky, off the wall, but they are democratically made. Now, here's a gentleman on the phone, and did you hear? I, I wish I had the tape of your voice, the the, the insolence, the oh, venom. Okay. I wish I had a tape of your voice, sir. You said, Mr. Farber, if Israel such a democracy, and then here's your hands on your hips, and I can see smoke coming out of your ears. Can I if talk? Israel's a democracy, oh. why can't Catholics marry Jews while they're chopping off heads and hands and fingers uh, and throwing people in jail and, tor and never a vote and never a free sentence written in a newspaper and never humane treatment for Jewish people? remains or remnants or the little Jewish communities that still eat absolutely, as Churchill Can said, unbroken even by a star of hope. All this retrogressive, dictatorial, feudal, brutalitarian evil is going on surrounding Israel, and all that concerns you is, and I'll quote, and then it's your turn, Mr. Farber, if Israel's a democracy, why can't Catholics marry Jews? You're too See, you know, obviously the problem. Please pull the tablecloth off the parrot's cage and let us enjoy the plumage. There was a tremendous Estonian rally, believe it or not, in Baltimore. Yes, I was there. 40,000 Estonians from all over North America gathered in Baltimore and scared one of the Soviet ships away. <laughs> they didn't want to call on Baltimore with 40,000 free Estonians that they didn't have their guns on uh, uh, in a free country, so that Soviet ship went someplace else. So they are. The pretext was that the, po uh, that the Hungarian Communist Party begged the Soviet tanks to come in quote, to preserve the accomplishments of the working class, close quote. They found one quizzling, Janos Kadar, who's still the premier, who asked tanks to come in. If the Soviets had not found a stooge willing to ask tanks to come in, and so then the Soviets are merely responding to the wishes of their Hungarian communist brothers, you understand? That was their pretext. And if they had not found Janos Kadar willing to do this, they would have pretended they got the phone call. The thing in my in my graying calm that I really wish he hadn't said was one word. I don't mind normalizations with China, but I would certainly not refer to any dictatorship as one of our two great countries. Bill Buckley nailed this down so well. He is so intelligent. And most of us think, well, all right, wait a minute, you don't, you don't want to accept Chinese allies? You want to go it alone against the Russians? And just because that one-party rule, a one-man rule, a dictatorship, you're not going to work with the Chinese, you're going to cut yourself off, you're not going to work with governments you approve of? No. But you behave in your national body language in certain ways. You don't get naked and throw ice cubes and giggle all night uh, with countries that you disapprove of you correct remember did not like hearing china any or any dictatorship referred to uh, as a great nation hitler drive show that capitalism means racism and communism means brotherhood you remember that anyhow in the great palace or the great hall or the great Tiananmen square whatever great place they had the rally jose williams stood up and belted out the most pro-American message. I would have loved to have seen a videotape of the faces of the communist Chinese members at a presidium. This guy wasn't following the script. Uh, this guy, this black activist leader from America, wasn't behaving like a plain old parakeet like all the others. 
He was speaking his heart. He said, yeah, we got racial problems in America, but we got America. We got a great country, and I want you to know we vote. It's not like over here. Everybody the same, one party and one press and one everything in America. We got a lot of things. That, oh, was I proud of Jose Williams. Well, Fern Cifre, who lets Americans go, why every kidnapper, like the Iranian militants, why they're all trying so desperately to help Jimmy Carter win re-election. Now, back no, to uh, 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 Qaddafi, right? Um, um, we've got uh, the Ayatollah, uh, we've got Fidel oh. Castro, uh, we've got Brezhnev, great old bunch of boys. Mm -hmm. And incidentally, the Polish workers are back. They never went away. They simply took a dip away from page one as the Polish Communist Party, with Russian Communist help, tried to decide how to undo the gains of the Polish workers. They have failed. The Polish workers are still there. They show no signs of being sucked up the Moscow exhaust pipe, much as Moscow would love to do it. It was you who came up with the bumper sticker, Welcome to Gdansk, home of the 10-foot poles. For Reagan, he'll back up begging. Call me again. Fern, give it. For Reagan, he'll back up begging. Fern, give I'll that, ma'am. Ma'am, do you think I can really help my beloved American population if their collective mentality is so abysmally dumb that they will take the release of the hostages today or tomorrow as proof of some Carter victory? I, I don't know. Because Europe, Asia, Africa even, uh, the North Pole, if any Eskimos are crawling around with transistors, could never take anybody seriously whose mass, whose bulk population would take a lingering, resounding defeat like the past calendar year with the hostages and reward somebody who merely managed through bribery, giveaway, and saying yes to conditions to terminate a defeat. You understand? Absolutely. Uh, I would like to tell the American people right now, damn you. Look at you. You are senile. You are senile before your time. 200 years is not that old for a country. Look at you. Here you are in a fight for your life. If, believe me, if this were boxing, America would be ruled out by a TKO. And I'll tell you why. Here we are in a fight for our lives, Bolshevik communism on the rampage around the world, trying to do us in. They'll stop at nothing. They admit it. They proclaim it. We smile doltishly and walk like little Abner through the valley, chewing a twig, while the Skag brothers are trying to roll boulders down on our heads from the ridges above. Uh, and all of a sudden, something great happens. The people, the people of Jamaica knock communism on its jigaritsa, uh, and uh, we don't even notice. Now, I say if this were boxing, it'd be a TKO. The referee would come over to America after round eight, wave his hand in front of our glassy eyes and see no recognition and end the fight. How dare we not have Jamaica Day from sea to shining sea in honor of these courageous Jamaicans who, in the face of terror and all of Fidel Castro's money and manipulation, voted manly out and voted Sega in. I say hooray for Jamaica. Laos, the rest of our nation, senile, either stupid, senile, or couldn't care less. How dare there be a war in the world between two forces, one assertive like the Soviet Union and its friends constantly looking for soft spots, and the other like America deciding when and where and if to react and it'll blow away and don't be a warmonger. And here we have two things in rapid succession. The Polish Revolution, don't let me catch you calling that a worker strike. It was a, a full-fledged revolution. Poland is a razor blade inside communism's boxing glove. It can't hit that hard now. It's going to chop up its own hand. Oh, it's beautiful what's going on in Poland right now. And do you know that Americans treat Poland... Uh, I don't know exactly how to tell you this, but Americans, uh, Americans of great influence... Well, I don't know, maybe I'll find a way to say it briefly and bluntly. Uh, during the Hungarian Revolution, we recognized, holy mackerel, we can't help them. But look, they are at least out there helping themselves, and they're doing our job, and they're fighting the tyrants alone with gasoline-filled bottles. And we should at least yell, whoop-de-doo, and we did. We had big rallies in Madison Square Garden, Cover of Life magazine, Time magazine, Man of the Year was the Hungarian freedom fighter. We found a means to identify with them quite properly. The polls were considered a news story that only a freak like me could really get off on for more than three days running. Do you understand what I mean? I sent one of my Polish t-shirts to a major figure. She put it on on her television show 
and I haven't interviewed her, but somebody who watched the show for me said, Barry, you could hardly see it. There was only one mention made of it by the commentator, and that was kind of disparaging. It took me a week before I realized what went on. That woman came in there feeling like I did, wearing that Polish T-shirt, and the producers of this television show said, what in the hell is that? Uh, and she said, well, I, I want to show solidarity with the Polish workers. And she said, and they said, oh, come on, baby, this is television. Forget the Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? She's too, she had too much guts to take it off, but I think they compromised and sort of put a jacket over it and made one quick flash of it on camera and one quick reference to it. With their strike parameters into their struck establishments, the Polish workers cannot guarantee their safety. It means they are prepared to resist by force. Polish police, Polish communist army and somebody in west berlin said what do you think about the uh, russians intervening and lech valenza said let the russians come we are ready for them wow all right let me just read the paragraph to make it official and you can take over from here the largest of poland's new independent wrapped up in sex and suntans and and, and outdoor barbecue the uh, press the american press considers us so out of the question apathetic that they say Poland's a bloody boar. They don't want to hear about Poland. That's why we don't read it, not because the uh, people at the newspaper were trying to protect communism. Anyhow, it work that way. They did not count on the follow-through. They, they did not count on the depth of the Polish workers' fed up the depth of his commitment. He's willing to die in those factories. I don't think we understand that yet. Right. Facing right now a battle, the significance of it is that the communists and their ap apologists over here could always say, oh, we promised the Hungarians we were going to help. <laughs> you know, Radio Free Europe, the Poles know we're not going to send them tangerines. They know that America will not help, and all of a sudden I feel joyously irrelevant. They don't care if the CIA is going to finance them and send them secret little bombs and wiretap uh, eradicated. They don't care if Marines are going to... They, we are not important to the Polish worker. Freedom is important, and whether we are with them, alongside them, above them, behind them, or completely out of the picture, they want justice on their jobs. Like to get started right now. You are... Remember the old save the Chicago 7? Well, I say let's save the FBI 3. Well, I'm saying let's take the FBI men who were arrested for performing their duty as they saw their duty and now stand to go to jail. I guess the most idiotic thing that has occurred since this, uh, I, I, I'm noticing not only that we're purple around the gills after a 25-yard jog, not only are our arms lumbagoed in for the weekend after six push-ups and we used to do 66 easily. We have committed something I didn't know a nation could ever commit. Nations have spoken courageously and acted cowardly. Nations have said nothing and acted more cowardly. But I have never known a nation, sorry it has to be mine, that for the first time in history proclaims its cowardice. We have said to the world, look, don't get into this superpower stuff with us. We are taking the cowardly position on this issue and we want everybody to know it. Here's what I mean. Now, are you a foreign policy student? If you know better than I do, don't let me get away with this. This is very important radio air time. This is WMCA, New York, okay? There's no... 50-watt station in Sherrill, South Carolina. I'd like to be on one of them, too, if one of them wants me. Anyhow, at the time of the Castro humiliation in early spring, all 10,000 Cubans jumping into the Peruvian embassy, we held our breath, because this could very easily have been the one karate chop on the Cuban spider web that would have brought Castro apart, down. The right statement from America would have set that energy in motion. If you don't believe it, just look at history. How did Castro get started? Did he come out of a tropical storm? Those small boats going south from Key West with supplies and money and agents infiltrating Batista, Cuba to help Castro. That's what got Castro power in Cuba. All right. If we had said we will, we recognize these 10,000 Cubans as a symptom of man's desire to be free and we will support them in every way. You don't have to say we're going to go to war against Castro. 
But just give an upright American statement that we recognize this as man's desire to be free. It's manifesting itself. We support this as we do every other freedom movement around the world, especially 90 miles away. You know what our statement was? Quote, we do not see this development as any threat to Castro's power. What right? What right do we have to undermine the forces of freedom in Cuba by making such a stupid statement which neatly eviscerates the entire freedom energy, uh, the entire freedom spirit. It just delays it like you pull the backbone out of a fish. And we did something worse yesterday. Did you hear what the State Department said? Did, did you feel, do you take this personally or am I the only one left? They should not allow me to broadcast if there are as few who feel the way I do as I fear that there are. I take it very personally. I personally felt that I was guilty of international public cowardice yesterday as an American citizen when my government said we have no intention of warning the Soviets to refrain from intervening in Poland because that would merely egg them on. Now that is the open, cowardly position. I'm not saying we have to warn the Soviet unions not to intrude. I would have liked to, for my taxpayers' money, that's my position. We wouldn't have had to do that, just simply say, say nothing. Keep them guessing. For a government like America to say, we have no intention of warning Russia to stay out of Poland because to do so would merely egg them on. Disgrace. WMCA, Barry, uh, I would not say it benefited the United States of America. I would say uh, it was a noble venture, and here's why. Uh, you see, I don't want to fall into the tank of uh, might makes right. We did not ridicule the French for coming to pieces like my favorite Alka-Seltzer under Niagara Falls in 1940. We thought it was wretched that the the aggressive Nazis were defeating and humiliating the peace-loving, non-aggressive French, right? right? We didn't say, who, you know, oh, the Mac, these Nazis got their act together. They are the wave of the future. What do you mean, why support the corrupt French? I think not to support the South Vietnamese in a way is racist. The French are white. We never abandoned them. They were uh, attacked, coincidentally, from the north, as were the South Vietnamese. In other words, our aim in Vietnam was what? Did we want their molybdenum? Did we want their oil? Did we want their land? Did we want their rice? No. We wanted to help them remain unengulfed by aggression. That was our aim. I think that aim was noble. Now, that's my only compliment. The, practice, the, the manner in which the war was, was waged, uh, the uh, going uh, into the Olympic sprint with 100-pound balls around each ankle, uh, the corruption of the American GI. Let me tell you something. Aspect of the Vietnamese War. But yes, I think it, uh, it, it had a noble aim to it. We were unselfish in trying to help South Vietnam remain unengulfed by communism. And look at here. But can, uh, can, we, can, can America afford to do it? Manner, absolutely not. In a more effective manner, had we waged it in time, most definitely. We did not wage all-out war in Korea. Youngsters aren't aware, and old-timers forget. We said exactly the same things about the limited war, Truman's police action, if we're, we're going to fight it, let's fight it to win. in Korea. We were not allowed, quote, to win, unquote. Matter of fact, MacArthur was fired, you remember? I remember. Uh, now, uh, but still, 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 South Korea is preserved. It is not yet a democracy, but compared to North Korea, South Korea is a perpetual convention of the ADA. We have a prosperity in South Korea, happy individuals in South Korea, improving conditions in South Korea, and still the potential for democracy in South Korea, which would have been lost had the North Koreans engulfed the peninsula. But, but, you know, I think Ronald Reagan was addressing himself to the past for a reason. I think he wants people to choose sides. I think he diagnoses correctly that the overwhelming majority, not of WMCA listeners, but the overwhelming majority of Americans, always in their bone marrow, refuse to be ashamed of our mission in Vietnam. The way we waged it, that's different. The fact that we lost, that's different. But having gone to war, we are not going to let the Jane Fondas convince us that we are Hitler Youth. We know exactly what you're saying. As a matter of fact, just in my WMCA experience, 
I have been saying, why didn't they listen to me? When I was when I was still a soprano, I was pulling at the swallowtails of ambassadors at embassies and saying, the people don't like the dictator we're supporting here in you know, Central America, well, South America. Well, where do you America. think I'm wrong, I, well, no, just, well, let me tell you where I think I was wrong until just the other day. You and I assume we bet on the wrong people, repressive people, rich people, mean people, uh, and then uh, the good people, the communists, came along, and our side had no public support, and poof, disappeared. Right? Right, exactly. Yet there's something else that bothers me now. This took a lot of years of wisdom, and I may change my mind again under your persuasion. But at the last minute, we pulled the plug on them. And it's the communists who write the history that you and I have inhaled. They're the ones who hold up the silken sheets of the dictator's mistress who, and the, while the throaty mob rampages through the rabbit warren uh, and they seize the university and the parliament and the radio and then the government's theirs. And then we say, shucks, we bet on another bad one. Well, in the case of Batista, Somoza, the Shah, we systematically abandoned support, a move which I favored because I hate all dictators. Right, uh-huh. And then, and then, what happened? The communists took over and convinced you and me that the great masses were on their side. Well, here is, quote, my favorite liberal, Murray Barron. Uh, the next time Castro runs against Batista, remind me I'm voting for Batista. The next time... Uh, the Shah runs against the Ayatollah, I'm going to vote for the Shah, and so on and on and on through the lesser of two evils, place by place. Born of something good. A lot of diseases uh, are born of good things that get together in a bad way. Uh, sloppy sentimentalism is born of being very, very decent. For instance, we got off to a late start in global intelligence because it was an early American official's opinion, quote, gentlemen do not read other people's mail. So we were crippled. We did not start when other countries started. Once we started, we caught up. Sloppy sentimentalism keeps us in the United Nations. We just can't give up that 1945 dream uh, that there is a parliament of man somewhere. Will someone remind me, please, why we have stayed in the United Nations this long? Will someone remind me, please, why we spend so many billions of dollars paying enemies uh, to hate us more? Uh, will someone explain why we show such respect for the criminal and such contempt for the victim? Um, when I first met you and, and, and read uh, what I read uh, by you, Harvard Hates America, was I exaggerating when I said that guy came in looking like a Woodstock holdover who said, now let me get one thing straight, I'm going to teach this course from a strictly that's, Marxist perspective? Huh? That's exactly right. That was, just six, that was just six years ago, too. And at your graduation, did or did not one of the major deans look at you and say, move to the left, John? That's right. That's exactly right. So not too late. It is not too too late to have a draft. It is not too late to have more dollars for defense, more defense for the dollar, a shaped up Pentagon, a revitalized military establishment, a reincarnated FBI, NCIA, a rearmed Japan, a rearmed Western Europe, including the Democratic Republic of Germany, which is the best defense against the Soviet Union. Uh, people 18 years old know that then we're going to be okay. We are going to be okay. You see, but my fear is that everybody 18 grew up thinking the Soviet Union's fine. We're the new Nazis. The real danger is the CIA, not the KGB. The real danger is not Soviet armed missiles, but American non-union lettuce, you know. So if, so if there are people like you who see through all the camouflage and persiflage and utter poison that you were put through, if there are people like you who can quietly call a radio station and with great dignity and articulation say, Mr. Farber, uh, our reputation is going down the drain, we're not staying it, how can we help? Then the mere fact that people like you ask if there are enough of you, that's the answer right there. Administration, don't you think that the police uh, were very free with the use of their clubs? I saw them really clubbing away and uh, passively resisting uh, students on the news. And I always wondered why none of the uh, Sovac demonstrators or any of the uh, local Washington youth who seemed to start the brawl were had been arrested. Mm -hmm. I wonder myself, First of all, what makes an American living in a free country like you side 
with the forces. I mean, American troops did tacky things uh, uh, fighting Adolf Hitler. I, I start fighting against Hitler, too. I, I, I beg your pardon? I said, I, I wasn't alive. Then. Well, now, wait a minute. I'm not even going to give you the dignity of an answer. If you're gonna, I wasn't alive during the Peloponnesian Wars, but I know whose side I favor, or World War I, or the Civil War. You mean because you weren't around, you're going to take no moral position on World War II? You're reserving your moral positions yes. for the side of the Ayatollah? But, uh, Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin were our allies. Just the separation of the same gang of international mm -hmm. bankers. People like David Rockefeller, it was, it was Morgan and Baruch, people like that. I have cut you off. I don't want anybody to think I have uh, tolerated you uh, and all of a sudden you finished and, and, and now I'm having the last word. I have cut you off. I have no sentimentality. I have no reservation against cutting people like you off. I am proud of my upbringing and being able to tell to my satisfaction poison from clean air. You, sir, are merely just a volcano spewing out poison. You're on the side of the Ayatollah. And look at, see, a normal American broadcaster would have felt guilty cutting you off. He'd have felt obliged to listen to you in the interest of freedom of speech. I have no such feeling. I am not intruding upon your freedom of speech. You are free to open your window and continue saying what you would have been saying to my WMCA audience. Your freedom of speech does not imply my obligation to sit still and listen personally, or certainly when I'm multiplied by many thousands, I'm not obligated to transmit you on to a WMCA listenership. But I want to tell you this, young man, if you're still listening. American troops did some tacky things en route to Berlin. Oh, we molested women, our soldiers. We ran those tanks and half-tracks over shrubbery. You should have seen what we did to the Normandy hedgerows. But I'm damned if I'm going to sit still and let malicious, malevolent forces such as the ones that impel you play my American finely tuned conscience like a harp and make me go, uh, 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 and try to figure out some rationale why the policemen swang their clubs. Policemen swing clubs fairly unfairly. Okay, people provoke policemen righteously and unrighteously. I don't know, but you are not going to use my beautiful WMCA airtime to try to suede, persuade people over to the side of a stealer of embassies and an executor of many, many multitudes of people with no trial and a total, absolute dictator. Sir, you're going to have to find another radio show if you want to propagandize the likes of that. I bid you good day. What I hear that I can identify with is a filament in what you're saying, and that is the instinct for Americans to go pearl diving instantaneously to the sucker side of every argument, to the defense of the criminal, to the defense of the villain, to the defense of the person who's not willing to work even though he's able. There's always a siren with a revolving red light and some social spirited citizen willing to rush to make sure that the villain is not mistreated and to hell with the victim. All I want is equal time. I want Paul O'Dwyer's to, around the world to worry as much about our hostages. If we had as many Paul O'Dwyer's worrying about our hostages as, as are worried about these people and their treatment, then I think civilization would be a couple points ahead. Right. I, was, I just want to see evidence of Carter's bootlicking approach to Iran with the students. Uh, be, be, just bear this out. You remember, as soon as the students were, were arrested in, in Right away, the propaganda mill of, of Iran started working. They're going to put our hostages on and spies. Now, this has two consequences. Number one, Carter would lose the election if anything happened to our hostages. And the other is, this is, in effect, giving the Iranian students in this country a license to do anything. All they do is go on a rampage, and, and, the, and then, uh, it, then the, the administration backs down because they threaten, they threaten us and threaten us, and it's, in effect, a license to steal. Mm -hmm. Now, you know that the, these Iranians... What they were doing, they'll say freedom of speech. What they were doing is just violating the freedom of speech of their opponents. You notice who came out of the woodwork with blood dripping on his hands from the Yana massacre? Mm -hmm. Attorney Mark Lane. Mm -hmm. Hey, that, Barry, we should have interned the entire Iranian diplomatic staff when they were in this country. But, I mean, on day one. On day one. Sure, we were to sit in an airplane. I agree with you, and I don't want to over-agree with you now. It's an election year, and I will bend over backwards to give pro-Carter sentiment its time on these microphones. 
It's one thing to look out the window of a plane and say, holy mackerel, this isn't the way I went last time. And then 10 minutes later, holy mackerel, uh, I wonder if, he's knows, if he knows where he's going. And then, holy mackerel, this is the wrong way. All those three things are a passenger musing out a window. Sorry. But when the pilot opens the door and walks back in and says, has anybody here got a map? Uh, then, then you know that your suspicions were confirmed. Now, when President Carter said, I have just learned a big lesson about the Soviet Union after Afghanistan. Sorry. Ooh, I, I was... Americans are finally waking up to our subsidizing of our enemies. Would you care to guess what percentage of the United Nations budget is paid for by the United States to support this VIP lounge of murderers, dictators, cutthroats? It would embarrass uh, Governor Reagan. I believe it's a dirty trick to help uh, Jimmy, and that's why Jimmy loves Billy. The only honest thing I think Jimmy said Monday night. Mm -hmm. And number two, uh, this country, metaphorically speaking, uh, is a wounded lion, and the jackals are circling around, not quite sure if it's mortally wounded or not. And every uh, now and again, they uh, they take a, a nip and move ever increasingly forward to the juggler vein, and then they scatter when the lion's uh, reflexes uh, make it uh, twitch. And after the twitching stops, the jackals begin circling again, uh, and so on. Uh, I believe that if Carter is reelected, then the jackals will uh, know, be sure, that we're mortally wounded and move in for the kill. And if uh, Jimmy is reelected, my opinion, it means that uh, the American people feel so weak and so defeated that they demand uh, Quisling become president. That's my opinion, Barry. Wall Street, which has nurtured it for 63 years as a more efficient means of sweating money out of the poor Russian and Ukrainian mujiks, as uh, Dr. Ezra Pound, who knew more than most people, pointed out from Apollo, Italy, 40 years ago, and Rahul Khomeini, who knows more than most, confirmed to a BBC reporter last year. So if America could atone for its world crimes since the time of Wilson by rescuing one boy from a criminal system, which was made in the USA, I think that's a good thing. Uh, there's more political mental illness in that... 45 seconds. I would like to take a tweezers uh, and give the tape. I don't want to touch it with my hands, but I'd like to get his disease. I don't want to catch it. But that's most 45 diseased seconds. I mean, not, I mean not, there have been 45 more diseased seconds talking with haters and bigots and so on. But politically, scientifically, sir, you have contributed the 45 most diseased seconds to my broadcasting experience. I want to take that tape up to the journalism school at Columbia. I'm going to give it to one of the experts. I, I'm going to let them wear gloves and put it on tape recorders uh, and, and, and let authorized people listen so they can know what I mean by the most 45 diseased seconds in radio history. Burton. Not our aim in Vietnam. We were trying to keep South Vietnam unengulfed by a tyranny. You say uh, the South Vietnamese government was a tyranny too. Yes, a non-menacing tyranny. Uh, they, uh, they were the victims of aggression. We were trying to help them to preserve, not democracy, there was no democracy in South Vietnam, but we were preserving the opportunity for eventual democracy, which we knew would be lost if the communists took over. Law school teachers, college students, college teachers, self-righteous intellectuals from every direction who say, Mr. Farber, you say you're an anti-communist. That's a very negative philosophy. What are you for? I think the most positive thing in the world is being an anti-communist because what other greater danger is there to children and other growing things and to liberties? Why should an American have difficulty saying, I am anti a form of government that denies its people every single elementary freedom from speech to expression, uh, freedom of egress to get out if you don't like it, freedom to face your accuser, freedom to shape your own life, freedom to move from city to city without an internal passport, uh, independent, independent judiciary, very important uh, freedom. How dare anybody not be anti stuff like that? I am appalled at the success that people have achieved who don't like anti-communism and have embarrassed anti-communism into silence. I love what you just said. Yeah, but I See, Yugoslavia is a strange kind of communist country. They say it's 50 percent, 100 percent Marxist, 50 percent Karl, and 50 percent Groucho. Now, Tito is the first leader in history to say, folks, I've thought about what's going to happen to this country after I go, and I have a plan. Tito proposed that he be succeeded, fasten your seatbelt, 
by a panel of 36 people. <laughs> a collective of 36 people to replace Tito. Salvador uh, in Central America. Look what's happening in El Salvador right now. Classic, classic, classic pattern. Here is, you see, well-supplied, well-coordinated communist insurgents drive the government up the wall. The government then overreacts. I don't deny a single one of those reports. I think the government is quaking in its boots. It is panic-stricken. It is over overreacting. It is unskilled labor. And I'll bet you there are these excesses. Don't, uh, if you're an anti-communist, I hope you won't go off the deep end and say, oh, these are the leftist media, they're exaggerating everything. I don't believe UPI is exaggerating. What has taken place, I think, is, again, part of a classic pattern. World communism, business addresses, Moscow, has been supplying Nicaragua. Well, you can just look a few pages deeper into the same newspaper, and you'll read a column by Evans and Novak talking about the communist buildup in Nicaragua to supply uh, neighboring El Salvador so as to bring entire regions of the Americas into the communist fold. All right, that's what's going on. Uh, we, on the other hand, do nothing. You see, there are two forces in the world. They are constantly looking for Nicaraguas and El Salvadors to follow Cubas and communize. We, on the other hand, just sit back and... It, you know, the world's like somebody with measles, at least a free world, and we think every new measle uh, is a separate and independent outrage not to be predicted, uh, and we just sit back and hope it will go away and that no new measles will pop up. Well, we've got measles, an aggressor, the, the Soviet Union, aggressing. They are active. They are trying to aggress. We are reactive, wondering if and when we should pick up some tool, some weapon, and defend ourselves at some point. First of all, you are spreading so much poison, arrant nonsense in the air. Let me back up and let, let, let's see. I don't mind spending a little time with you. I think you're worth it. Uh, first of all, you give what I consider the even-handed camouflage. There are many kinds of communist governments and there are many kinds of uh, democracy, sir, the one thing we can congratulate ourselves for is that there are many kinds of communism. We were not always as weak and indeterminate as we are now. Back I don't like you telling a nation full of young people, older people, men, women, children, people who just like the sound of good things. That's the trouble with America. We don't know, we don't think, we don't study. We like the sound of good things. What you said sounds good. You would have won nine out of ten dinner parties that I go to in a year by saying, oh, Mr. Farber, you talk about communism and democracy. There are many different kinds of communism and there are many different kinds of democracy. Holy mackerel, I can see the pretty girls hugging you. I can see the old men nodding in assent. I can see the women saying, gee, I'm glad he showed that extremist Farber up. Now we can have our dessert course in peace. And sir, you would be wrong and I would be right. I want to put you on your question. I don't see how any honest, intelligent person can ignore the lessons of history. We must be prepared to stop aggressors or they will not be stopped. Now, a lot of people subconsciously, quite honestly, uh, convince themselves that this is incorrect, that we've got them all wrong, that we're not so good ourselves. What about the blacks in the South? What about the poor people in the cities? Let's pay attention to all. Take the take the spotlight off Russia, examine thyself, correct our own ills, mend our own fences, tend to our own knitting. There are many rationales. To me, to my perception, they all say, consciously, unconsciously, or subconsciously, I choose to ignore the lessons of history. I don't want war. I don't want to fight. I don't want to think about it. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to pay taxes for it. And instead of standing up and admitting my fear, I am going to devise a political card house uh, that will let me think that I am not cowardly but righteous. Okay. Uh, I want to read one short paragraph from today's Roland Evans and Robert Novak column entitled, or headline, Secret Soviet Arms to Nicaragua. Two convoys of ships carrying Soviet arms from Cuba have been secretly unloaded in Marxist Nicaragua to help build a growing weapons cache there for use in the coming battle for neighboring El Salvador, a development that may force beleaguered President Carter to reconsider his courtship of the left. 
in Central America. Uh, Barry, you know what phrenology is? Sure. Well, not, the science of telling what's going on by holding your hands against the per different bumps in a person's head. Exactly, and that was a 19th century pseudoscience that's been repudiated. Oh. Likewise, Barry, I think the results uh, in the Caribbean shows that Marxism is nothing more than another 19th century form of phrenology. Marxism, Barry, is economic and political phrenology. And it's about time we start to realize this. And just because... Uh, Someone has degrees and uh, teaches in a college doesn't necessarily mean he has right. anything like uh, common sense. All right. And what we've got to do is support these governments that are anti-economic phrenologists. All right, see if you can sympathize. You, you're the only person I know likely to understand my beautiful point here. Hang with me. Yes. Can you understand where if my beloved Uncle Charlie is said to be in very bad shape? A new doctor comes on and says, Uncle Charlie's going to be fine. The pink is back to his cheeks. He's breathing again. Begin to cuss a little bit at the night nurse. Uh, you, why don't you come see your Uncle Charlie? And when I go to see my Uncle Charlie and he can't recognize me, I am very disappointed in the good news. You understand? Yes. I don't care about his chart and his pulse rate and the pinkness in his cheeks. Now then, here we have a Polish revolution that has been dangled before. Uncle Charlie, of course, is America. Punch drunk, a myopic, uh, dyspeptic, uh, emphysemic America. Uh, and, and here we give him a Polish revolution and there's no recognition. We give him a Jamaican election where the would-be castor communists are thrown out and the freedom people take over even after all that terror and there's no recognition so I'm worried about Uncle Charlie I'm very worried about us I don't know if Dr. Reagan has arrived in time uh, you know uh, the uh, mask is finally off the uh, cult of Muhammad in Iran with the vicious Jew hatred of the Ayatollah Khomeini following the uh, Hitlerian line of making Jews wear identification but, Barry, we have to think for a minute of the short-sightedness of the liberals in this country. Listen, I, I talked to you last week, and I commented on the fact that I hear you all the time. Thank with, you. With Mr. Farber, I'm really curious. Yes. What do you do the rest of the day? Well, I have a full-time job during the day. What do you do? I'm a salesman. How's business? Great. And, and I go, I'm in the... Uh, Great, you really are. <laughs> Those words come pouring out, they are marvelous. You string them together like gems on a necklace. Why, thank you very much. Really, it's terrific. Thank you. Maybe you ought to be broadcasting. I got a great spot for you. Really? Where? There's an opening on WMCA between 4 and 6. They need a good conservative. <laughs> the point is, Barry, that these people that were condemning the Shah of Iran could never in their wildest imagination believe that as bad as they claimed he was, that the lunatic that took over after him would, when the, the Holocaust is taking place, for example, two and a half million Afghanistanis uh, were killed by the Soviets simply because the Shah was not there as a buffer against the Soviets. And I wonder, will they be quiet about Jews being eradicated in, in Iran the same way that we had the same silence about the first Holocaust in Germany? Right, well... Hey, I enjoyed your phone call to England yesterday. Thank you. I hope they did over there also. <laughs> it's, it's a disgrace when the President of the United States must, uh, in an election year, stoop to uh, Nazi-like tactics of the big lie by saying that Ronald Reagan, or inferring that his the use of the word states' rights is a code word for bigotry. Barry, what can be more bigoted than a large, a centralized federal government program of affirmative action that penalizes various groups due to race? And Jimmy Carter, who got up in front of uh, the uh, Urban League and dangled uh, the promise of jobs and federal appointments before these people to garner their vote, can be nothing more than a, a racist himself. And if anything, yes, Ronald Reagan may at one time have come out against the Civil Rights Act, but uh, Jimmy Carter was one of the most sec was running as a segregationist in Georgia, and people have to be aware of, of the type of uh, innuendo that this man is trying to uh, foster upon us. Well, you've touched upon something very dear to me. Uh, communism is my biggest concern, dictatorship, but communism makes up the major malignancy in the dictatorial world today. That bothers me overseas. Domestically, I think I'm akin to what you just touched. I think the real promulgators of race hatred are people, politicians, who pander and emasculate minorities. They emulsify their will by apologizing for 400 years of mistreatment and saying, just wait, I'm going to give you more than my opponent. 
Well, Barry, what, what these federal programs in actuality do is they come down to a plantation system. And the federal government, the White House, is the head of the plantation. And those who uh, scrimp and scrape before the federal government get the most benefits. For example, the reason... Oh, no, I, got, I have got no time for to deal with the technology. The technology is far and above and ahead their primitive uh, social systems. So you're... Yes, for example, when Britain, uh, you as a uh, Englishman should know that uh, the history of... Uh, British uh, colonialism stopped tribal warfare throughout the world. In fact, the Middle East was a haven of peace as long as Britain had its troops and uh, uh, government stationed there. But once Britain left, and the example is throughout the world, those peoples have reverted to violent savagery. So yeah, right. You know yourself for a fact, Barry, the big banks uh, would rather trade profits uh, than ideology, and they're, uh, they're mm. propping up the communist economies all over the world. Exactly. How did you like tonight? I, I, I really, I didn't think he would be that bad, but he was even worse than my, my, my mm. deepest, worst expectation. The man is, is, is simply bankrupt politically. His, his smile won't get him by anymore, Barry. Mm. Uh, quick advance to the history, Barry. The uh, destiny has thrown its gauntlet at our feet, and his election is our acceptance of that challenge. And rather than speak about what his administration will do, I'd like to say that I can remember when Barry Farber was a narrow majority of one, speaking out on traditional American values, and you were vilified by the McCarthyism of the left, and you were called from anything from a crypto-Nazi to a Jewish Ku Klux Klansman because you stood up for traditional values in this country. And history, Barry Farber, has vindicated you. And it is most unfortunate that in your political career, you were at the right place, but at the wrong time. You were espousing these values before people began to understand what you were really saying. And I think that, uh, and I'm not saying this to butter you up, but the truth is behind these microphones, you've done more to help shape American p opinion and turn it around than I think you could have ever done being stalled in some committee in Congress or having to go through a, a, an election campaign. We're loving revolutionaries throughout the world. Likewise, those of us who elected Ronald Reagan have cast the vote heard around the world. And that has given sustenance to freedom-loving peoples throughout the world because now, be they those patriots in Jamaica who've gotten rid of that Castroite lackey, or our brothers in Poland who are standing eyeball to eyeball with the Soviet bear, have now come to the conclusion that America is united and ready to defend freedom wherever it may be. You know, Barry, I'm it, sorry I've got to go, but I, I, I love you. ...and enrich for the guilty and criminal to manipulate to his own advantage. And likewise, they've busy minded harebrained gun control laws. They've armed the criminal because the, the, most of the crimes are committed by 15% of these criminals who are constantly getting back out on the street to commit them. And the people have become nothing more than sitting ducks for these uh, two-legged wolves are prowling our streets. And I think that, uh, the, that society, if, if we consider society as an organism, any organism has a right to protect itself from any type of virus or cancer cell. We can't uh, uh, talk to a cancer cell. We can't rehabilitate it. Likewise, criminals that are beyond the point of, of rehabilitation must be taken care of for the good of society. Likewise, we may have an unbelievable backlash in the, the society. People will begin taking the law into their own hands. Unless, of course, by the liberals feel that this is the ultimate solution. Think, and I, I wish I had time to expand upon this. Do you think that the original liberal thrust, which started all this insanity, uh, was well-intentioned, or do you think it was deliberately destructive? I think, Barry, uh, it was well-intentioned. What happened is these liberals isolated themselves in intellectual ghettos where their only perception of the world was from a very narrow viewpoint. And, yes, you know, it is quite ironic that while this week the Polish people without arms and their armies are spitting in the eye of the Russian bear that the liberal pre press in this country has been quite uh, quiet about the fact that 40 years ago uh, this week the shadow of Soviet imperialism fell upon Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. Speaking about the, that the fact that really nothing's been written about that, the fact that for 40 years those three nations have not existed except as colonies of the Soviet Union. May I once upon a time, there was a radio station in New York. It's still around. They call itself Community Sponsored, and they spend 24 hours a day... I know what you're talking about. They spend 24 hours a day arguing who's better, communists or homosexuals. 
and this particular station uh, got uh, trouble. A, a dissident former employee blew up some wires, and they needed money to get back on the air. So I figured it'd be a good conservative opportunity to invite them on the air and raise money to get them back on the air, okay? They came, and they gave me a program schedule for that week, and I looked at it, and it said 25th anniversary. This is one of the musical programs. 25th com anniversary commemoration of the incorporation of Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia into the Soviet Union. My eyeballs bulged and dangled by the optic nerve. I said, incorporation of Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia into the Soviet Union? I said, they were incorporated like women are incorporated into the love life of a rapist. And they said, Red Vader, to uh, pinpoint a pattern which keeps repeating. Those who the communists would destroy. Uh, they first labeled corrupt. What was Chiang Kai-shek? Uh, corrupt, and holy mackerel, is any decent, well-meaning American gonna continue to support a corrupt leader of Asia? Of course not. Uh, what was Batista? Corrupt. Uh, what was the Shah? Corrupt. What was pre-communist leaders of Vietnam? They were all corrupt, don't you see? Now, I want to thank out loud a block evil, block wall-to-wall, -wall, systematic, unredeemed, totalitarian evil visited upon helpless populations uh, by people uh, like the Ayatollah after their corrupt predecessors are overthrown. I mean, when is somebody going to say it out loud? Hopefully one of them who helped overthrow the Shah by making all that noise in America. When is one I'm going to say at least the Shah was a mensch Torture chambers, yes. Sabak, yes. Authoritarian rule, yes. But compared to the Ayatollah, uh, he was Amy Vanderbilt. He was Norman Vincent Peale. He was a modern 20th century forward-marching mensch. And that's the message which must replace. Ooh, 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 folks. Forget the communists. We found somebody else who's getting our money, getting our aid on our side, who is <sighs> corrupt. Okay. A major celebrity of women's liberation whose face appears on television screens everywhere accused me of, of well, of course she says she understands my anti-black and anti-women feelings because I'm a southerner. My jaw is still hanging. Barry Gray defended me and I don't want to uh, do it anymore. But I mean, anybody who listens to me knows that there's not a bigoted corpuscle in my fastest bloodstream. But the, the notion that because I'm a Southerner, this, this woman is supposed to be an intellectual. This is the most pig-headed attitude I have ever heard. I have been to Germany. Uh, that does not make me a Nazi. I have been to the Soviet Russia. Uh, that does not make me a communist. Uh, I have also been to the Virgin Islands. I am no When you walk into a large record store and say, what have you got? Uh, that, that's the frame of mind you'll put that clerk in, is when you come to me and ask me what good Ronald Reagan stands for. I mean, I, I'm world propaganda. Now, Johnny, just because you're an American and you have indoor plumbing and you eat three meals a day and you go to a nice school and your daddy makes a nice living and you have a car and you elect your president, you have whatever newspaper you want to read, you go to any church you want, you can leave the country if you don't like. Don't think that your way is better than their way. You've got your way. They've got their way. We are one world. And little Johnny grows up thinking when he reads something that says the Iranian government, he thinks, now what is a government? They've got theirs. We've got ours. A government is a nice dome and a little house on each side and it's all white and there's a Congress and there's a president. There's a Supreme Court down the block if the other two mess up uh, and they must have their government too. I think we've got to fire retro rockets and reverse the one world myopic, sycophant, simpering, absolutely candy, cotton-headed uh, propaganda of the past 40 years. I respect a news director who devotes a whole minute to the cost uh, of the... Did you hear the uh, uh, five days after Normandy invade, the cost of invading Hitler Europe uh, is going to be very, very depressing to the American town. You can't put a price tag on freedom. The reason I didn't like that particular newscast is I felt that if the person who wrote it really understood, if he didn't understand it, wrap him on the wrist and teach him some history and uh, send him back on his merry way. 
But if the person who un un did under uh, who wrote that did understand it, I think he's trying to pour wet blankets and cold water over a very valiant uh, freedom fight to make Americans pluck. Oh dear me, maybe this is wrong for the Polish workers. Oh, d oh, they're they're really costing their men, women, and children a lot of. Oh dear me, maybe they should be reasonable. And then that same newscaster said, if the communists uh, uh, cannot put the Polish workers' demands uh, into a, a context which the communists can accept, then, now here, here's his wording, then the Russians will be forced to intervene. Now, you may talk about a volcano uh, as uh, erupting, uh, being forced to erupt because of seismic pressures. Uh, you may talk to me uh, about palm trees that must be blown down by typhoons that are forced to strike a coastline. You may talk to me uh, about villages that will get inundated by a dam that is forced to break. But do not educate any more Americans to the fiendish and absolutely cowardly proposition that the Soviet Union is like a typhoon, is like a dam, is like a volcano, and if it is forced to intervene, why, you know, who are we? These are immutable laws of nature. Why, uh, if the Polish workers demand too much freedom, then, of course, the Soviets will be forced to intervene. And we're supposed to go cluck, cluck, clucking about, yes, yes, let's not make the Soviets intervene. I... I'm on the other side. I want the further humiliation of world communism. May I stop age? Do you know what? Uh, I, I, I'm not saying I'm smarter than you, most of you, but I'm older than most of you, and, and I'm, I, I just resent the fact that most of you don't understand the deliciousness of this moment. It sounds like a normal headline. The Polish workers refuse to have the second meeting with the communist government authorities until communications are restored to Gdansk. And you yawn, you think, all right, workers, the more workers and their demands are the same the world over. No, no, no. Keep that spotlight on the Polish worker. It's fine. Real, now you have the entire mass of the Polish labor movement demanding, among 19 other valiant things, an end to censorship. Here the Polish communist government they're trying to, again, they are trying to cure cancer with spray deodorant, uh, throwing a prime minister out. They're going to have to throw a lot of communist prime ministers on the flames before Poland calms down. I don't want this to end in Poland, and I am not going to join the timid roll call of Americans preaching, don't, don't rock the boat, don't annoy the Russians. I heard them. There were Polish rallies all over the United States, big one in Chicago, big, very spirited rally here. And was I happy to see not just those Poles, I expected them outside the Polish consulate. I was happy to see so many non-Poles. I was happy to see signs telling us that the Lithuanians were there, the Afghans were there, big signs, Afghanistan, Polish brothers. I was tickled to see the Cubans there. I was happy to see blacks there at this Polish freedom rally. Out, please, of those people at rallies who say, we must show restraint. We don't want the Russians to go. In. Do you know what they remind me of? You ever hear that sick joke about the the 18-year-old boy who murdered both parents and then appealed for mercy on ground that he was an orphan? Uh, who got us into this position where we are shivering for fear the Russians will hiccup? Uh, where our kneecaps turn into sassafras jam uh, for fear that Russia will yawn uh, and raise eyebrows and get provoked. Who got us here? For years, this crowd that calls itself liberal, you see, they were real down on people like me who were warning, uh, that, that, you know, we were shrill, jackals, warmongers, cow they, they were down on us for years for saying Russia's bad. Watch out, folks. Russia does things like invade. Russia does things like intrude. Russia does things like intervene. Oh, did they heap scorn upon us. And now, and now, and now, those same leaders are standing up saying, don't do anything rash in Poland because the Soviets will intrude. They will intervene. They will invade. And mark my word, they will invade. Yeah, yeah uh-huh. Glad you're finally awakening to the character of the other superpower with which we share the planet Earth. 
am not going to restrain my fantasies and my wishes at this time. You can tell by the glint, by the caliber, by the octane of what's going on in Poland. These aren't workers who are going to be sent home with a cost of living increase uh, and more shower time. I am enjoying their excruciation. Uh, how is it that they can enjoy all of our... What do you think they were saying when it, when they thought America was going to get consumed by flames in, night, in the night? Burn, baby, burn. Riots, police, Mayor Daly, the anti-Vietnam... Oh, go back to Radio Moscow. See if they were worrying uh, about annoying about provoking the MFA. they wanted our demise they wanted our destruction and they arrayed their forces of propaganda to that end i'm merely anti-dictator and the most malignant dangerous dictatorship in the world is the soviet union yes i would love to see its magazine explode i, w I would love to see it come apart i would love our american cowards who have been trained to be cowards by 40 years of cowardly propaganda who will think I'm warlike because I'm saying stand up. Jewish American Secretary of State, we have crystallized, institutionalized cowardice well, in our government. You know, I saw the text of, of the speech that President Carter made. He made it in Chicago while he was running for president. It was right after President Ford made his blunder about Poland. And, and, and basically, one of the lines in that speech, right, he, said, he said something like, why don't we have a president that speaks up for Eastern Europe? That was the term that, that candidate Carter had said. You say, very interesting, you know. Mm -hmm. so, MCA. You know, we have been so discredited and unbelieved. Now, follow me, this is because I, I will give you what I think is a preview of the next development. We have been so ridiculed and scorned since the 1950s, we who say America is free, communism enslaves for crying out loud let's get together unashamedly and fight it wherever it enslaves people and let's blunt its ability to enslave anybody else up to and including most especially us we have been so disbelieved that there are people today who figure whoops poland is their little ticklish spot but romania is okay and czechoslovakia is okay and east germany is okay and bulgaria and soviet russia is okay so they got a little parochial trouble in poland it, it uh, the, the communist empire is poland from wall to wall right a time jobs were jobs now there are menial jobs and meaningful work, don't you see? The sociologists intervene, and anybody who wants to keep his dignity insists not on a menial job, but on meaningful work. Ooh, have you ever wanted to get your hands on a sociologist? Never get my hands on a sociologist. I, I, I despise violence in all forms, especially mine. I don't like teachers teaching racism, anti-Semitism, Nazism, communism, but I am not so worried about that because it is hard. I don't care what kind of evil messiah complex you have, it is very hard to turn out, if you are a teacher, racists and bigots and Nazis and communists and anti-Semites. But somebody is doing a bang-up job of turning out egotistical zombies who are too good to roll up a sleeve and break a sweat and get to work. Now, do you have a story like this? Do you feel like I do? If you're the enemy, I need you more and more, because more and more the enemy refuses to come out and fight. Uh, call me, please. My number is in New York, 489-1155. 489-overqualified. I don't think my friend from the School of Journalism would be willing to run air. Ooh, 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 I'd like to get one hand on her and one hand on the sociologist. Yeah, Fern, the way you're laughing, I'd like to get the third hand on you if I had one. I'm doing this. I, I, I really want to give this thing everything I've got. I'll tell you why. Uh, I don't like hand-to-hand -hand combat with bayonets, rifles, knives. If anybody wants to fight, I'll hold his glasses. And yet I despise the dictatorial ideas that are being foisted upon us through our American democratic media, our American democratic colleges, <laughs> our capitalist-supported institutions of higher learning, uh, communist propaganda is what we used to call it, and I'm not ashamed to say it in those words. Communist propaganda 
has never been foisted upon us as blatantly as right now. And, and the reason I want to form a help form and get active with a Welcome to Freedom Committee is because I see no opportunity to strip to the waist and do hand-to-hand -hand combat with communist propaganda as directly as we can do it right now. Look, what's we've heard it over these microphones. We took a poll. To me, the right side won. The kind, the people that said welcome to freedom won, but it was not a resounding victory. Uh, it is something. I'm damned if I'm going to sit up here in the North and be manipulated by our brothers in the South, particularly Brother Fidel Castro. I don't know of any case where Latin Americans with insufficient education were manipulated by America in our most imperialistic phase, the way we are being manipulated by Fidel Castro right this minute. And I don't like it, and I've got the right not to like it, and I've got the right to influence as many of you to help me not like it as I possibly can. Hand-to-hand -hand combat is what intrigues me right now with Cuba. Fidel Castro, may we review the damn breaks. Thousands and thousands and thousands of Cubans want to leave. Fidel Castro is embarrassed. Do you know how a speaker feels? Have you ever been a speaker? Do you know how it feels when one person walks out on you? And when you're speaking, one person, I'm exaggerating, one person is excused. One person may have a train to catch, a plane to catch, may have to take his pill at exactly that moment and not five minutes later. One person, the sickest ego in the world, can have walk out. But you know what I mean by a walk out? Yawns, looking at watches, significant bunches of people getting up and shuffling out. Ooh, does that hurt a speaker? Now multiply that by a million for a megalomaniac dictator, and that's what it does to his temper, to his ego, when his people obviously do not like his rule. Well, Fidel Castro freaked out. Now, he didn't freak out enough to do anything dumb. He did something very brilliant. He said America has a free press. America is not too smart, sophisticated. They were in the 50s. Uh, we were smart in the 50s. In the 50s, Fidel Castro could have never gotten away with this. The Hungarian communists had a big embarrassment in the 50s, and they couldn't get away with this manipulation. But Fidel Castro figures now it's the, it's the 80s, and, and it, it, America's a pushover. What he did was simply cover up the fact that he was so embarrassed, so weak. He can't control the Cuban economy. He can't command the affection of the Cuban peoples. It's a dictatorship. The opposition is building up against him. So he let them go. But then you see, if he just lets them go, the press is going to say, nobody likes Castro. Castro's grip weakening Cuba in a freedom fever. And that would be no good for communism. So what he did was, was manipulate us in the cruelest, the, the most, uh, so, oh, yeah, I, I'm so insulted. I take this personally. I take it very personally that I am personally insulted by Fidel Castro, by what he tried to get away with. And I'm angry at so many of the rest of you that with you at least, not with me, with you, he did get away with it. Here's what he did. He spread the word that he was emptying prisons, sending pimps, prost, and he did get as many as he could, I'm sure, plus his own simple communist provocateurs whose job is to play hob with the refugee process when he gets here. So what are the headlines all over America? Castro emptying his jail, the prisoner class of Cuba flooding into good old sucker Uncle Sam's protection. Refugees, ungrateful refugees, tearing things up at Fort Chaffee, tearing things up at Indian Town Gap, yeah, big confusion, chaos. So the Archie Bunker type American, yes, I'm calling you an Archie Bunker if you're getting sucked in by this, puts the paper aside and says, hey, what are these Cubans in the Send them all back. Who needs them? Bunch of criminals anyhow. Thought they're going to take our jobs. Well, if the decent Cubans who merely want freedom are being shut out, by Fidel Castro's manipulation, by Fidel Castro's grabbing the American media and aiming the spotlight at the criminals and those who are unruly in the refugee camps and homosexuals and pimps and prostitutes. What a disgrace that we don't have the sense to discriminate. Cubans are going to take our jobs. Cubans are going to make jobs for people who are living here now who don't have jobs. Cubans are medicine for slums. And I've got pictures to prove it. And if you're from the west coast of New Jersey, by that I mean the west bank of the Hudson, or if you're from Miami, you know good and well when you put Cubans in the most diseased neighborhoods in the United States, they get cured. Now, lecture, forgive the uh, stentorian, authoritarian tone in my voice, but uh, if I didn't feel deeply, then I don't think I'd be suitable for these microphones. I think 
Uh, I'd, I'd be better off feeling deeply uh, and, and being wrong uh, than just not feeling anything and disc jockeying and ping-ponging all kinds of opinions all around. I want to tell you, tell you something. Once upon a time, America had assets. We had an Army, Navy, Air Force. We had credibility. We had diplomats who reflected our power and made it so that we didn't have to use it to defend our and other democracies' national and natural interests. We don't have any of that now. We are at the moment in second place. We are a patsy. We are a pushover. We cannot stop the Russians from invading neighboring countries. We cannot protect our hostages. We can't do what we used to be able to do. I mean, pretend that I'm a doctor and you're sitting in my office and I got your charts and I'm saying, look, you just can't do what you, I'm sorry, you can't play those 18. I'm sorry, you got to give up that. No, I, I, look, let your health club membership lapse, buddy. You ain't up to it anymore. I want you to get in that rocking chair and rock slowly six times after lunch and, 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 and then lie down. You cannot do what you used to, America. Maybe regain your health, drink a little broth, come back to your senses politically, and maybe you will, but you can't right now. You've got one asset left, and that is everybody in the world would rather live your way than the communist way. That's our big and only card. So the minute you allow yourself to be manipulated by Fidel Castro's plain old meanness, the minute you let him inspire you into an isolationist, keep him out, who needs them, pimps, they're spies, disruptive, the minute that mood takes over, you will make the communists so thrilled because they will turn to their own and say, you see there, not only will they not liberate you, not only will they not try to overthrow us, not only are they trying to make friends with us, not only will they not send you supplies, not only will they not beam the radio broadcast that might animate and inspire you, they won't even let you in anymore. They don't want you. They think you're a bunch of trash. The man, take the... Bl I agree with you. I love you, but take your... Take your vengeance out not on the refugees who have Hispanic names. Take your vengeance out on the opportunistic, spineless, myopic, absolutely psychedelically convoluted American politicians who set up those damn fool laws and repeal them and get back to the wrinkle-free America of the 1940s and 50s that didn't have these... <laughs> Oh, uh, forgive me. I, I, my doctor told me to avoid excitement. Their problem is that they're not being allowed to do their job. I talked to INN guys, the Immigration and Naturalization uh, Office, and I, I double-checked some of the things they said to other sources. And uh, what they're saying is true. They, we are being avalanched in this country now with people who shouldn't be here. People who, under the normal immigration laws, would not be allowed in this country. And we're not talking about three or four people sneaking in. We are talking in terms of thousands. They had the goods on some of those Iranians that they had uh, been holding the other day. And they were all set to bring proceedings against some of them. And some, uh, in, in fact, some of the paperwork had already been uh, uh, started and, and signatures put on the line. And they were given the word that they had to stop. And it came from above the Justice Department, incidentally, which is the town organization of INN. Mm -hmm. That is what triggered it. They are unable to carry out the law or carry out their job of enforcing the laws of the United States on immigration. I talked to a member of that same service who would not even give me his last name, but would just, he told me enough to prove to me he was legitimate. He was a member of the Immigration Naturalization Service. He said it was chaos. Uh, Farsi interpreters were walking around telling the Iranians not to cooperate, not to tell them anything. Uh, and and it, it, it was just uh, infuriating. And that's why they pulled this action. Now, I told them, spearheaded by the Catholic Church, America, we just have simply dropped the ball. Okay. Uh, Nicaragua has gone. Nicaragua has accomplished more socialization in six months than Fidel Castro accomplished in two years uh, after he took over Cuba. I have a communique from El Salvador. Now, I, I, have a, I, I want to congratulate my producer, Deirdre Bryant, for walking me out into the hall, riding the elevator with me, walking up two long blocks, 
and down into the subway with me to wait for the train because she was so touched by a letter I got from a woman whose son just escaped from El Salvador and tells her what goes on. I was appalled. How can this be going on and not be on the page one of every American newspaper? Political kidnappings, murders, assassinations, expropriations. El Salvador is next, period, not comma. And how far behind is Guatemala going to be? Yes, the communists are taking advantage of the condition. The story is told that Joseph Stalin who, of course, was the number one militant atheist on the planet Earth, confronted the Vatican after World War II, the Cold War, the Roman Catholic Church was staunch in its opposition to communism. Joseph Stalin was staunch in his opposition to all religion, especially the religion that stood in his way, which at that time was the Roman Catholic Church. And somebody was talking to Joseph Stalin and his aides about the Pope, and Stalin laughed and said, the Pope, how many divisions does the Pope have? Well, this was Pope Pius XII. And when told that Joseph Stalin's coarse, insulting, demeaning remark, Pope Pius XII said, my son Joseph will meet my divisions in heaven. Well, um, Joseph's son Brezhnev uh, may meet the Pope's division this side of heaven. He may meet them in Poland. It is absolutely precedent-shattering, breathtaking for the Pope to say, if there is war, I will return home. Wow, you are the leader of the Soviet state. Your empire is coming apart because you've been revealed as a big consumer fraud, and your people don't like to live under slavery with no tonics, no food, no warmth, no future, no hope. So they're coming apart, they're rebelling. I don't want this to smack of any witch hunt or Cold War hysteria. But I believe, sir, and, and if I'm wrong, I'll apologize. We'll walk, we'll face the photographers arm in arm. Uh, I'll buy you lunch. I believe, sir, you are a professional agitator. I believe that it is your job, in effect, to call talk shows and hammer Soviet propaganda home. No, I don't know or care whether you're paid by the Kremlin. That's kid stuff. Well, on the other side, because I am not, and I know in my heart okay, that I'm not. Okay, okay. You will not. You've answered the question. Agitator. You've answered the question, Your sir. Your job is to inundate the airwaves with propaganda every single day. Now, wait. I cut you off, and I, let me tell you why I cut you off. Because I enjoy the symbolism that fair hands that love freedom still have the power to cut off propaganda for enslavement, okay? Yes, I cut you off. Now, I, ha I have not limited your free speech. You may go outside, you may get a soapbox, you may stop strangers, you may ring doorbells, you may print leaflets, you may get your own radio show, your ratings may be higher than mine. I Don't say I've, li I've limited your freedom of speech. I've merely cut you off the Barry Farber show. Uh, you are allowed to listen. I will give you my answer to your question. But I will not entertain professional agitators for a government that deprives its people and every other people it can conquer of every single freedom we Americans consider important. Now, you're playing on American gullibility. We're not always the best read people. We don't look at, I'm afraid we like pornography better than maps. Uh, and you're just playing on that very incredibly shallow argument Look at the bases around Russia and look at the bases around America. It just so happens, sir, that the way history fixed it is that after World War II, we had a lot of bases over there. But that does not mean that we are threatening them. You say, who is threatening whom? They are threatening everybody who is still free. That is, it's a luncheon club. It's a, it's a clam chowder society. It's not the United uh, Nations. Let, let me go back. And we're also paying most of the freight through false teeth. I would go to the United Nations. I've gone to them on the first day and said, look, uh, you have failed in 35 years even to define the word aggression. Okay, it's, it's a tough word. But let's see what you can do now on your favorite turf. Embassies, diplomatic immunity, sure. extraterritoriality, that's your stuff, fellas. We have had our embassy in Tehran invaded. We've had our diplomats held captive. 
Now, we are going to give you one calendar month. A week would suit my liver and pancreas better, but let's be diplomatic. We're going to give you one month to get our hostages back, the United Nations. If you fail to return our hostages to freedom, we're going to call off the United Nations, kick you out of America, and send you back to your respective slaveries. You would have seen the line in front of the United Nations phone snaked around 3rd Avenue because they can't leave New York. Their homes are here, their wives are here, their mortgages are here, uh, their girlfriends are here, their girlfriends' mortgages are here, their clubs are here, their own zone is here. You're left out, you're leaving out one thing, or maybe you're not because I'm interrupting. They're living higher on the hog than they've ever lived in the whole of their lives. Exactly. Little Russia invited me to lunch at a very nice restaurant over by the UN. I very seldom get to lunch in time, even when I don't have gout. And Russia, knowing this, blackmailed me by saying, Barry, if you're more than 15 minutes late, the table reverts to the Polish ambassador to the UN. <laughs> because it's his favorite table and his favorite restaurant. Wait, you know something? I may wind up agreeing with you. What went on in Poland went on without us. We were irrelevant. The Polish workers never expected anything from us except silence and damn little of that. And that's about what they got. Freedom fight goes on even though our seat is vacant. And, and if we're all living in, a, in escapism. We just don't want to remember. We don't want to remember when he recommended the Russians to enter the Geneva, come in on the Geneva conference and said that's the desperation. He is the one who's responsible for that wonderful meeting between between uh, Fagan and him. Don't get uh, credit to this nincompoop. He is the one who is bringing in the Russians at the Geneva Convention. But nobody even knows about it or even thinks about it. Or by Owen Carter likened the plight of the PLO to the plight of the colored people in the United States. And subsequently, a week later, Mr. Young, Ambassador Young, was talking to a PLO. But nobody put the two things together. There are so many terrible things this man has done in three and a half years. Something to Albania. I love Alfred. I don't know why, but for some reason, that country just does it for me. I can look at maps of Albania all night and look at names like uh, Tirana and Duresh and Shkutari and El Basan. Ooh, and I, I, I just get a little too excited. I have to close the book and drink a warm glass of milk, you know? Something. Hey, it's like trying to nail a custard pie to the side of a barn. You know, well, beloved nation. You tell me, Miss, well, we have uh, alien and sedition laws. We have trees and walls. We, uh, we have uh, spies. Uh, we, we, we even catch a few still, and we have spy trials. If you uh, I know that there are loads of Jewish anti-Semites I can quote. Why well, don't I just saw with the Palestinian, Alfred Lillian, Paul, Leonard Bernstein with his party for the Black Panthers who were going around.